Uh, good morning. Uh, today we are going to look at the elements of computing. And when we talk of the elements of computing, trying to refer to the basic input, processing, storage and output system of a computer. And in elements of the computing, of computing, we may say that you've got what we call input. There are input elements, there are processing elements, there are storage elements, and there are output elements. So, mostly these two are married together because they are found inside the CPU. And when referring to the element of computing at junior secondary school, we say the three computing stages. So, we would say input, processing, storage, and output. And in the format for junior secondary school, we used to put it like this. We were saying input, there was that arrow, then we'd say processing, stroke, storage, then from there we go to what we call output. Output. Let me see if you can you see this. Alright. So that is this format we are going to follow. Why is this so important to understand as students of computer studies? First thing first, the definition of what a computer is comes from these elements. And when you define a computer, leaving out any of these elements, it's a technically a wrong definition you are giving. So looking at these elements of computing, you can define a computer, first of all, as an electronic device which accepts input, processes, and stores data to produce the output. It's a device, electronic device, which accepts input, processes, and stores the data to produce the output. Like that, all the elements of computing would have incorporated in a simple definition. And that type of a definition is going to be accepted anywhere. We may have similar topics at the junior secondary and senior secondary. Uh, the only difference that you will have noticed at the junior secondary, we call this as the three computing stages. But at senior secondary school, they call it the elements of computing. The definition still stands the same. The device, electronic device, which accepts the inputs, processes and stores the data, and it produces the output. Like that, all the devices involved in the computing process would have been covered. So you cover the input devices, you cover what makes the processing and all the storage devices. Together, the output devices, like the printer, projector, the monitor, they are all covered in just a simple definition. So, to begin with, let me just show you the diagram for the three computing stages. I'll give you these notes. So there is the input. There is the storage and the processing. Then there is the output. So at this area, I will draw this on the board in the format of the junior secondary school. But at senior secondary school, most it is represented like this. And this enables us to remember the definition of a computer. It is an electronic device which accepts input from input devices, it processes and it stores the data and it produces the output as a result of the processing which has taken place. 
So, putting it in the format we normally do it at a junior secondary school, it is going to look something like this. We drew in grade 8 and 9, we drew something like this. Something like that. Here we add the input, then there was the processing, there was the storage, there was the output. Then these were inside the one box and we call that a CPU. Then there were these arrows like that. But the most important thing to remember about this arrow, any data coming from out of the computer via an input device is supposed to go first to processing. It goes to processing after processing. That's, you, that's when storage and output can take place. And this is what we call the elements of computing. And for the sake of grade eights and nines, the three computing stages. And that is exactly what I drew when I started as the input. From input, we go to process, or just write process, stro storage, storage, then we put what we call the output. Then, these two cannot be interchanged. Storage cannot come before processing. That is incorrect. Any data going into the computer system goes straight for processing. After processing, then the computer decides, I mean the processor decides where to take the data, either to the output or to the storage facility. And this is the acceptable format of processing anywhere in the world. So if you make a mistake in between here, what you have created it doesn't exist. But if you're trying to talk about the computer as we know it, this is the format and it should stay like that. Hope that is clear. Then it, for now, we are going to start with the uh, input devices that are part of the computing. This entire a diagram, drawing, is what we call a computer. In a computer, there must be input, there must be output, there must be storage, there must be processing. When one of them is missing, that is not a computer. This is what we call a computer. Anything less than this, it's just a component of computing. But the entire computing concepts come from this type of a drawing. So under input, to start with, the most common type of device you can have there, let's assume we understand this. Then, today I will just concentrate on input devices. So, let me just clean the board, and I want you to assume that we are dealing with the inputs, input devices. So, the most common type of input device which can be found on any computer is a keyboard. A keyboard. I'm sure all of you, you know what a keyboard looks like. But uh, let me just present it for the sake of those who would have questions to see what a keyboard looks like. This is exactly what we call a keyboard. And it's a common input device which can be found almost on any computer. And the common type of a keyboard, we call it the quiet keyboard. Uh, we call it the quiet, let me bring it down. The common type is known as the quiet keyboard and the reason we call that is we call it that it's simple because if, on any com keyboard you'd find this q w e r t y on 
all the keyboards that we are using this is a standard here and mostly that's why we refer to it the quiet keyboard it's the most common type of a keyboard and the keyboard has got what we call alpha numeric keys a keyboard as in alpha from the alphabetical any numerical keys so alpha numerical simply means it uh, combination of alphabetical and numerical characters and uh, this is uh, what you need to know about a keyboard also you need to know that uh, anything that can be typed from the keyboard is known as a character so you you do well to define a character as uh, any key that can be typed from the keyboard and uh, we call it uh, a character as uh, alphabetical and the numerical characters. You can also see the numerical characters up there. And an ordinary keyboard that we use on desktop as what we call function keys. Even on laptops, you see those keys on top of these numerical keys, there, there will appear some keys here beginning with the F. And we call those as the function keys. And that is the topic for another day. But that's all you need to know for now about a keyboard the most common input device that can be found on e, any computer. Away from the keyboard, we've got a category we call pointing, pointing devices. On pointing devices, I've got what I'm using. You can see the case that I'm using here. This case can only be used for pointing on anything that I want. Let me see from this, I can point at this. What I'm using is basically what we call a pointer. And the most co common pointer we have is the mouse. We're calling it a pointer because it, despite it being an input device, it cannot enter any type of data in a computer. You cannot enter characters in a computer, you cannot enter pictures in a computer using a mouse. A mouse is simply a pointing device. But it is not the only type of pointing device. We have other various types of pointing devices. One, like I said, we've got a mouse. Uh, we have what we call a touchpad. Show you a touchpad. And here we have a joystick. joystick, any other type of pointing device. Uh, let me see if I can remember some more. If I remember, I will put it up there. But I want to show you the devices listed here. Uh, mouse. Uh, let's go just straight to the internet to see if we can see these types of devices. Uh, I'll ask Dr. Google to give us the images the images google.com let's say pointing devices there let me use the images for google so the predominant one obviously it's a mouse it is a pointing device a mouse as he uh, mo mostly would say three buttons but the common mouse will have two buttons the left button for clicking and the right button for righty clicking then we've got a scroll bar that is used to push the the page up and down so when i do this i'm using the middle button which is the scroll bar so this is simply what we call a mouse and then i have a joystick here uh, joystick is also a pointing device, but it, it similarly look like it looks like a, a gear lever, but which is used to control a game on a computer. If you've played some games, I think you've used some of these devices. Eh? What you've been using are game consoles, and specifically we call them as a joystick. 
So basically, this is our joystick looks. And this is the joystick. The game console is basically also a joystick. Apart from this, we've got what we uh, other types of mouse uh, mice in plural that we call trackable. Tracker, trackable. This is the correct spelling, of course. A trackable is simple, just looks similar like a mouse. But the difference is that you don't push this mouse on the table when you want to use. What you need to do is use a rope ball there. When you rotate this ball, the case will start moving. When you rotate that ball, the case will start moving. And it has stationary uh, patterns there that can be used for clicking. So this is also an input device. And this device is known as a tracker ball. It's also a mouse. It's a tracker ball. A mouse which is upside down. And in the sense that he, the, we normally push the mouse on the table for the case to move on the screen. But in the case of a tracker ball, we don't do that. All we do is just to use the ball there and things will start happening. Then, apart from those, let me see if I can show what we call a touch pad. A touch pad. A touch pad is commonly found on laptops. So this is what we call a touch pad. It is also an input device. And these are the most common types of pointing device. So when we say pointing device, they belong to this category. There are others like the stylus pen. This is what we call a stylus pen. I'm sure you have used a smartphone using a small stick to uh, as input device. That's what we call a stylus pen. And it is also a pointing device. What you need to remember that these input devices are known as pointing devices. And that's all they can do. You cannot enter any form of data in form of text, in form of graphics, nothing apart from pointing. So there is no specific data that can be entered using the pointing device. All they do is simply to point, select, and you click like that. So away from pointing device, we've got what we call the readers. We've got the readers. These, they read data, and after reading the data, they read data outside the computer. And after reading, they send the data into the computer system. Among us, these types of devices, we've got what we call optical character recognition. We've got what we call magnetic character, magnetic ink character recognition. We've got what we call optical mark reader. We've got what we call scanners. By the way, let me just put this in context that all these are scanners. The way they operate is different. And that's where I am going to take a little time to explain. And the other scanner is the barcode, barcode reader. They are called readers because they are used to read data outside the computer system and you send the data into the computer system. Uh, the common one that we use is the barcode reader, which you can find in any shop. A barcode reader scans the product codes. Uh, barcode reader, let me see. Barcode reader. There are these devices, you see these in shopping malls. When you pick an item in the shop, which is scanned at the checkpoint there, it will be scanned against the device looking like this. 
This is what we call a barcode reader. And any item you're going to pick in a shop looks like that. This is the barcode. And this is the barcode reader. The difference is a barcode is found on the product you want to buy, the item you want to buy. And it contains details about that product you are picking. If it's sugar, it contains the price, the name of the product you've picked, then the expiry date, all those are inside the barcode, which is on the product item. Then this is what will be scanned against the scanner we call the barcode reader. And uh, I think this, these are common now. You've been seeing this. Uh, it's, they are everywhere. Because about uh, every five kilometers, you find a shopping mall. In the shopping mall, they employ these devices. There are types and types of these devices. Especially when you go to shopping mall here in Zambia, like uh, pick and pay, shop, uh, shop right and choppies, this type of a scanner is common and it's stationary. That's why they scan it, the barcode. On each book that you're going to, to pick, you find that it will have a barcode. And these barcodes are different from one product to the other. They may look similar, but they are different. I have a book with me and it has a a barcode there. So this is what we call a barcode. And it stores the, the price for this book, the maker for this book, the name of this book. And that can only be decoded by a device we call the barcode reader. Then in, away from the barcode reader, we've got the optical character recognition. Let me try to see if I can explain this. For instance, I have this book. This is the book I wrote, uh, Theory of Computing. There is one for junior secondary school, and there is another one for senior secondary school. And it's on sale. If you need one, my number is there, 0966272740. So if possibly on this page, let's say, there are mistakes. And these mistakes are so many. I don't want to start typing all over again. I can get what we call the optical character recognition to scan this. And after scanning, it's going to recognize these characters and send them into the computer system where I can edit them using Microsoft Word. That is the OCR. It enables you to edit it uh, characters captured outside the computer system. So that is the OCR. Then I've got what we call the magnetic ink character recognition. This one, it is very common in the banking sector because this one is used to process the checks. It reads the ink characters found at the bottom of the check and it sends them into the computer system. And obviously it can be used to decide whether this check is real or not. That is the function of the magnetic ink character recognition. We've got what we call the optical mark reader. The optical mark reader, anyone who has written grade 7 exams here in Zambia, you were shading and you were told that your exams will be marked by a computer. And the device they use to mark those types of exams in the optical mark reader. It reads the shaded areas from the, from the paper and send them into the computer system. So in Zambia, mostly this is common in, in the Examination Council of Zambia, and now there is what you call Zambian Lotto. When he, people play the playing card, let me see if I can show you from the images here. Mm, that is the optical optical mark reader. There it is. And I don't know if you can see those that image. There is this playing card. After you shed the correct the numbers there, it's supposed to be passed through this device which we are calling the optical mark reader. And it will just take the numbers from shaded regions. So that as well is an input device. 
And the last input device I would want to talk about from the screen is the scanner, the ordinary scanner. The ordinary scanner will just capture the entire image and it will treat that image as one whole document, like a picture. So you cannot actually edit each character. It doesn't recognize that. It just recognizes one big image. If I have an image on my system which has been captured using a scanner, mostly uh, the PG, uh, a G, an image like this. This image is taking long. As it is taking long, let me continue speaking. There it is. So this image was captured using a scanner and it is treating this as a one image. But if I wanted to edit the characters where it is one there stroke one, what I will need to use is the optical character recognition. And that is the difference between the OCR and the ordinary scanner. So I'm sure these few scanners makes a difference. And uh, since they capture data from outside the computer system, they read data from outside the computer system and send them into the computer system. We call this as the automatic, automatic input devices. Should you be asked about an automatic input devices, they are talking about the readers. Data entry is done using the keyboard, but the data capture is done using the automatic input devices. And the last thing that I was going to talk about doesn't affect mostly junior secondary school, but it affects the senior secondary school. It's the sensors. Sensors, there is already a video there on my YouTube channel. You can just uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel by searching for Matthews Boaria and you'll be able to see a lot of videos that have been posted towards the computer studies, which is tailored for Zambian syllabus. I hope that is clear. And for your own information, uh, there are other type of videos you are able to see on my channel from uh, primary school for ICT. Maybe you uh, haven't introduced the teacher himself, Mr. Mraisho. Just a minute, people see you. And this is Mr. Mraisho. I know you remember him. Anything to say? Hi, guys. How are you? I hope you find these videos very interesting and uh, uh, they should be able to at least increase your knowledge in ICT. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. So he's still producing some more videos which will be online for you. Thank you for now and we'll see you next time.